right. Good morning, everybody. Thank you to all of you who are joining us here today uh, for a presentation, again, on the English language certification exam for international TAs. At the International Students and Programs Office within the Global Initiatives Unit is pleased to partner with our colleagues at the Division of Extended Studies International Programs to provide more information about the new ELCE processes and policies uh, to our campus community. We are joined by students, staff, and faculty today. My name is Gabby Hoffman. I'm the Assistant Director of Student Experience and Engagement at the International Students and Programs Office. Um, we are fortunate to host our colleague from the English Language Institute at the Division of Extended Studies, who I will have introduce herself momentarily. Uh, we also have Sarah Carvalho from the Engaged Teaching Hub here to help answer questions from the audience. Uh, so today, before we begin, uh, just a few housekeeping items. Um, so all of our participants are in listen-only mode. Um, you can hear us, but we can't hear you. Um, we will ask that you please use the Q&A um, feature to submit questions. Um, we do ask that you try to keep your questions uh, to the end of the presentation if you can, or if you have them, please enter them, but know that we will be getting to them at the end of the presentation um, to allow time to get through all of the material. Uh, we are recording this presentation, so um, for those of you who might need to leave early, um, those who may not uh, be able to join today, uh, do know that it is being recorded and should be available by Monday at iwebinars.ucsd.edu. Um, I will also be sending a copy of the um, recording out via email, so, so everyone who participated has that to hand. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to my colleague, Jessica, to introduce herself and begin our presentation today. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. I'm Jessica Quinn. I'm the ELCE coordinator here at Division of Extended Studies. So um, I'm new to this role and happy to present on some of the particulars of the program, although I may not have all of the answers, so we'll be uh, investigating together. Um, as you can see here, our policy for um, English proficiency for teaching assistance is that all international graduate students are required to demonstrate a high level of oral and oral competence in the English language before they can be appointed as a TA. This is a condition of employment and it's up to the hiring department um, who would hire a student as a TA um, to ensure that their uh, employees qualify um, and follow these policies. Policies. Um, so we want to um, ensure that we're following the policies that were recently adjusted to help the um, the alignment of admissions policies for graduate programs and this language proficiency requirement. So you're an international student and you want to become a TA either for your department or a different department. We'll call them the hiring department. Um, on my next slide here, I have a little bit about the process of how that works. Um, for the ELCE, you don't have to come to us. Instead, you will first apply to a TA position, um, an open position in any department that you feel you're qualified for. It's up to the hiring department in step two here to check your application and determine um, whether you've already satisfied the requirements for English language proficiency or if you need the ELCE, the English language certification exam. If necessary, I can help to consult and interpret our policies, and sometimes we have taken questions to the graduate division as well. So um, there's sometimes a little bit more involved because every student has a particular situation, although our policy tries to cover um, the most common situations. If you do need to take the ELCE, oh, sorry, could we go back? If you do need to take the ELCE, the hiring department will coordinate the date and time with me um, on your behalf. So you do not need to schedule it for yourself, but you do need to be in communication with your hiring department to make sure that you're available um, at the times proposed. The sessions will take place on Zoom, and I will communicate the results to the hiring department, who will then move forward with um, your TA appointment if possible. And later on, I would send you an individual score report that you would be able to take to other departments or future quarters if it's necessary. 
We also have a representative here from the Teaching and Learning Commons, Sarah Carvalho, um, who could speak a little bit more about um, a possible course called ELPII um, that students might have to take depending on our recommendation about the results from the ELCE test. So this is a, a broad overview of um, how you would apply to be a TA and kind of my involvement, other departments' involvement um, on your application process. So the question becomes on my next slide here, <laughs> if we're looking at that question to where the hiring department checks if you satisfy the oral English proficiency requirement, what are the ways that you can satisfy the language requirement? So students can satisfy the requirement first if they have submitted a sufficient speaking score. Second, by taking our test, the ELCE, but newly in the yellow box, our new policy is that um, you may be able to, to satisfy this requirement um, if you have completed your most recent degree from an institution where English is the sole language of instruction. Um, on our website down here at the bottom, I would encourage you to click on the link and check out the policy is explained there. There's an accordion menu at the bottom with some more details. Um, you can check whether your institution is listed on the WHED website as having English as the sole medium of instruction or the only medium of instruction. Um, and that is the measuring tool that that is the the um technique we are using to, um, to check whether English is the sole medium of instruction. And according to um, the graduate division, no other um, information <laughs> plays a part in that decision. Um, so there, there's no other way to certify that. Um, we're using the WHED website only. Um, there's the... the <laughs> A uh, question comes up then, if you've submitted a TOEFL, IELTS, or a Pearson Test of English score, what is a sufficient score? So we have our cutoffs. Um, at the time of admission, when you submitted those scores with your graduate application, um, if you showed a valid score of 26 or higher on the TOEFL, 8 or higher on the IELTS, 84 or higher on the Pearson test of English. And for TOEFL and speaking, those are speaking subscores. So we're not looking at the total. We're not looking at the average for the IELTS. We're looking at the speaking test in particular. If your uh, score is at or above those indicated, you are exempt from the ELCE. You have already shown your English proficiency. If your score is below these cutoffs, that's when the graduate division requires that you pass the ELCE unless your most recent institution was one where English was the sole medium of instruction. So if you need to move on to taking the ELCE, we do have some qualification requirements that should be listed right underneath. There we go. <laughs> You're eligible for the ELCE with scores between 23 and 25 on the TOEFL speaking between 7 and 7.5 on the IELTS speaking, and between 66 and 83 on the Pearson Test of English. If your scores are below these cutoffs, I have a little bit more information here as well. Scores lower than these cutoffs indicate to us that further language work is needed. So we require students to work on their oral production, work on their language skills by um, providing proof of taking some sort of course. Um, for example, our Division of Extended Studies ESL department offers courses in communication and speaking skills or in pronunciation and fluency. And so I can recommend a couple of those classes to uh, students who may need to work on their English skills before they qualify to take the ELCE. A little bit more here about what the ELCE is and how the process works. Um, the purpose is an oral English proficiency test because you will be employed as a TA. Your main function is to communicate verbally. Um, we do not use a written exam. Currently, we are administering the test on Zoom in 10 to 15 minute sessions. And it's, a, it's an interview with some everyday questions and in the second half, a teaching simulation. So I'll go through um, the, the three big bullet points down here. 10 to 15 minutes is your time commitment on Zoom. The assessment panel includes one faculty representative from your department and one language assessment specialist. 
<clears throat> excuse me. So the language ass assessment specialist um, might be me from uh, international programs at the Division of Extended Studies, or it might be one of my colleagues um, who are trained in assessing language skills. We do a quick um, welcome, check your ID, give you a little introduction. The first part is general English conversation that functions as a warm up, And then the second part is the technical English where you become the TA and answer a question from the faculty representative of the hiring department. Again, I have a link down here at the bottom to our frequently asked questions on our website. Um, so it might answer your more particular, more detailed question about the test. You can check there. During the test, we're going to assess you in a variety of different skills. We're listening for your pronunciation accuracy, how you um, understand our questions and handle answering those questions, your general and technical vocabulary, your overall fluency or smoothness of your speech flow, your grammatical accuracy, and how you organize your ideas and communicate clearly. The possible results that might come out from this test are at four levels, um, with pass being the highest, did not pass being the lowest, and a couple of options in between. So I'll give you a few more details about these on the next slide. A score of pass means that the candidate, the TA candidate, can TA um, in the session immediately following this test. No other requirements apply. A slightly lower score, a pass with conditional certification, indicates that this student might be might need a little bit more support in oral production. And so we're going to require the student to um, contact the Teaching and Learning Commons and take the ELPII course for support concurrently during that first testing session, or if there's not an immediate um, TA appointment, the student could take the ELPII in the session before um, TAing. Thank you. <laughs> Slightly lower score the provisional pass. Um, we will allow the student to TA. We will ask them to take that ELPII course for a little bit more support in oral production. And we will also ask that student to test again so we can get confirmation of improvement in oral production. Um, so if that score um, is the, the result of your test, um, we'll put you on the list for testing during the next window um, before the next quarter starts. Um, our lowest score descriptor did not pass it means that the student cannot TA um, in the session immediately following the test. Um, if the student has a TA requirement in their department, we're going to ask them to take the ELPII course and we'll want to see them again for another ELCE test. There are some applicants who do not have a TA requirement. Um, the department policies might differ on this, um, but in short, the, the student cannot TA, but doesn't need to take the ELPII course and may need to test again if they want to TA in the future. A couple more details here um, about some particulars. If you need to take the test again, we can absolutely schedule it for you. Um, PhD students must qualify by the third test, MA students by the second test, unless you're in the CSE department. Uh, so we, we do have some uh, tricky situations that might come up. And so now I'm happy to answer questions. Um, I hope that I gave a nice overview if you have a question that is unique to you, more particular, and you didn't get an answer during this session, you can contact me at this email, ip-itaprogram, ucsd.edu, and I'll try and investigate further. Thank you so much, Jessica, for that information. Um, as you mentioned, yeah, we're going to take some time to go over questions. Um, if you ha do have more particular uh, sort of case-specific questions, I think, Jessica, it's probably best, um, as you mentioned, to, to email directly um, by the email on the slide prior. I'll put that up again just so folks have that available. Mm -hmm. um, but for more general questions from our students, our staff, uh, any faculty who are joining us, um, we will go ahead and take a moment. Um, I will go through here and see if we um, might be able to have someone can answer uh, maybe out loud. Mm -hmm. um, 
So from a student, we have a question here. Um, what if I've taken an oral communication course at a community college? How does that help me uh, in this way for this exam? Yeah, so that that has happened um, where a student who had a, a lower score on TOEFL or IELTS and didn't qualify for the ELCE found an oral communication course at a community college, um, submitted proof of that course to both the hiring department and to the IP ITA program email. Um, and so I was able to schedule that student for a test using that information um, that the student had worked to improve their oral proficiency. Thank you. Uh, we have a question here from a staff member asking, how can advisors help students prepare for the ELCD? Great question. <laughs> um, if you are in a position to um, have oral interaction with the student, that would be a great way to help them prepare. But you can also recommend um, programs such as the English in Action program um, or other ways that students might um, work on their oral proficiency by joining a, a student organization um, getting other ty types of, of social interaction, um, or taking, taking a course on their own, um, that might help them improve their oral, oral proficiency. Um, I also recently saw a short research video. I think it was last spring, um, where, Students were presenting their research and one of them happened to be a linguist who had done research on student self-talk. Um, if you actually spend a little bit of time talking to yourself in the mirror um, and sort of preparing your thoughts in, in English, as well as, um, you know, writing or, or journaling to improve vocabulary, grammar, um, actually talking out loud to yourself is a way to improve your language proficiency in, in any language. Um, so I'm excited about that new research and integrating that into my teaching. So that's a way that um, maybe advisors could suggest to, to their students to give them, you know, a little homework assignment practice your oral production in any way you can. Great, thank you. Uh, we have another question here. Uh, what options are open to students who scored less than 23 on the TOEFL? Um, less than 23 on the TOEFL means that you would not qualify to take the ELCE in this session. And so we would ask that you take a course to improve your oral proficiency. Um, a couple of courses available this fall from our ESL department at the Division of Extended Studies. Um, one course called Conversation Improvement is a live online course, and one course called Pronunciation and Fluency. So those would both be approved um, as proof of helping you improve your oral proficiency. Students in the past have also been involved in the English in Action program. Um, there's no proof of that yet, so I'm working on a form that students could use um, just to sort of document their involvement in that type of program or any other um, outside activities that, that would help them to improve their English proficiency. Um, the information that, that I have shows that a student who scored below 22 on the TOEFL, below 6.5 on IELTS, or below 66 on the Pearson test speaking um, would be required to take two courses. Um, so I do have a few more um, recommendations from the Division of Extended Studies ESL department on what the second course could be. We have a few courses offered um, called Mastering Your Public Speaking Skills or Mastering Your Presentation Skills. And so those would, would qualify as a second course um, if a student needed to take two um, or wanted to take two. Great. Um, next question we have here, um, both of these are, are somewhat related, so I may, may ask them as one. Um, one is just wondering, will I need to submit a diploma or anything of that nature for the most recent degree um, with English as the main medium of instruction um, as the only language proof? What, what proof do I need to submit? Um, in this way? I would, I would address that question to the hiring department. Um, I don't have any access to student records um, because I'm in a separate division of the university, so I cannot check a student's previous degrees obtained or any of their admissions information. Um, so it's up to the hiring department how they want to uh, determine the student's qualification there. Um, 
it's it's their role to fulfill the get, the GEPA policy or ensure that students have satisfied the language requirement according to the GEPA policy. Um, so I'll I'll put that on the hiring department. And the question here that it's somewhat related, um, the student says they've obtained their bachelor's degree where English was the, the medium of communication. Um, however, they don't see it listed on the official WED site that you mentioned. Is there any other way I can waive the test or, or some kind of proof that I can provide? Um, I would escalate that question through the hiring department to um, the grad division. Um, a, a similar question like that did come up before, and I got information from the associate dean that um, only the schools listed on the WHED website um, were going to exempt a student from the ELCE test. Um, but a hiring department is able to ask for a waiver from the grad division. Um, that information is on our website as well about who to contact at the grad division. Um, and there's a question here. Some of the courses you were mentioning earlier um, that are offered through uh, international uh, the Division of Extended Studies um, on improving oral fluency and, and so forth. Uh, is there any way to put those in the chat or is there um, a, a web page where those are listed by chance? Sure. Let me get the link. Information should be updated on our ESL page. Um, with the fall courses that are um, being offered right now. Enrollment is ongoing. Um, the two courses that I mentioned, Conversation Improvement is a live online course. Pronunciation and Fluency is also a live online course. So that means that they have set meeting times, but they're via Zoom. Um, so you don't have to travel in person um, to our campus. For a second course, if a student does need to take two, we have Mastering Your Public Speaking Skills, and that is an in-person course. The unit loads for these courses vary, um, and so does the cost, um, but I've heard that there may be funding available from hiring departments. Thank you for sharing that information. That's really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, one individual is asking, where can I find the TOEFL score thresholds? On our website. I can put that link in the chat box as well. So on that main page, it shows that the qualifying score for TOEFL is at least 26, for IELTS at least eight, and for the Pearson Test of English at least 84. Um, and if you go into the details, um, in the accordion menu below, it shows um, what happens with scores below those cutoffs. And I, I know you touched on this earlier. Um, this person might have come in afterward, but uh, they're seeking to clarify how many uh, courses or units need to be passed um, for those who score less than 23 on the TOEFL. I believe you said two, but just to just to clarify. If it's if it's less than 23 exactly 22 it should be one if it's under 22 it should be two thank you okay. sorting through some further questions here um there's one here, I don't know if we're able to address this or not, but uh, someone is asking, does UC UCSD accept Duolingo speaking test? Uh, depends on who you ask. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I know that there are some programs within Division of Extended Studies that I think do accept Duolingo. Um, I don't believe that undergraduate admissions or graduate admissions do at this point. And again, just to clarify, so I, I, I guess I should say because gra because graduate admissions does not accept Duolingo, it doesn't it doesn't help you out with the ELCE. It, it doesn't give us any information about what to do there. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Patty is telling me undergraduate admissions does accept Duolingo at UCSD. Um, but for the purposes of, of grad admissions, I think it's still not a, a valid score. So that's why we don't have it included in our chart. Thank you. Just a reminder for um, any students with particular um, sort of case specific questions, um, we encourage you to email the email address here, ipitaprogram at ucsd.edu. Um, we're hoping to address more general questions here, but if there's something case specific or something you want to check about a certain score or a course you've taken, uh, we encourage you to, to email this address so, so someone can answer that directly to you. Any other questions that folks have? I'm trying to sort through some of these, but if you have any further, further questions, we'll be here, happy to help with those. There is one question here. Um, someone asks, while well, taking one of the two courses that you mentioned, um, should we take them for credit or no credit? If it's possible to take a course for credit, we'd like you to take it for credit because that way it will show up on your transcript that you did the work. Um, there are other programs, the English in Action program, for example, doesn't really have any documentation. And so I'm developing a way for um, students to, to get a signature, to get some, some sort of um, particulars uh, that they would be able to submit back to their hiring department and to um, me as the ELC coordinator to, to kind of check that they've actually worked on um, English fluency. Uh, there is a question here. Um, if someone's received a 7.5 IELTS speaking score, um, I would need to take the test, right? But if my department determines that I don't need it, I don't have to take it, right? The department does not play a role in determining. We only should be following, or department should only be following the policies published uh, and approved by the grad division. So a 7.5 means that a student should be taking the ELCE. Uh, there's one question here. So we still have to take the ELCE exam even if we have taken the oral communication course? So if a student had a score below those cutoffs, say a TOEFL 22, and then took an oral communication course, at that point, the student would qualify for the ELCE. So yes, the student would still have to take the exam. Um, the, the TOEFL score was too low initially, but with um, the work in the course, um, we would be ready to evaluate the student's um, oral production for the potential TA appointment. And for those of you who might have joined us a little bit later, do know that this presentation was recorded. So um, some of the questions we're seeing um, regarding course requirements and how many need to be taken and so forth based on score. Um, Jessica reviewed that earlier and I will be sending out the recording. Uh, this will be living on our website. So we'll send out information on that so you can review it in depth um, and see kind of where you fall and what those requirements are. Uh, there is one question, should we pass the specific courses that you mentioned, or can we pass any courses related to um, sort of speaking oral fluency? Yeah, as, as long as the course is um, related to, to fluency, oral production, um, you can submit it for approval. Um, our courses are not required. They are suggestions because we offer them, we have them available. Um, they're, you know, through, through UCSD, through Division of Extended Studies, so I'm familiar with them. Um, but outside courses are potentially acceptable. Um, one student, for example, completed a course through um, San Diego, uh, sorry, San Diego City College. Um, so courses from the San Diego Community College District, um, you know, Miramar, Mesa, City College, um, could potentially be acceptable. All right, it looks like we have um, gotten through um, 
most, if not all of our questions this morning. So um, I just want to thank you again, Jessica and Sarah as well, um, for all this helpful information. We hope this was helpful to all of you who joined us today. Um, as I mentioned, this has been recorded. Um, we will be posting this on the uh, International Students and Programs Office um, website in the coming days. Um, and so, uh, and we'll be also sending out by email for those of you um, who joined the webinar so you have that direct link. Thank you, everyone. Again, have a wonderful rest of your day, and we look forward to welcoming you on campus soon.